Hello everyone again, welcome to the production facility and hydrocarbon allocation webinar. My name is Katrina and I'm with Brian Research and Engineering. I'm working from our European office, which is located in Czech Republic. We also have offices in the US, in Texas, and in Singapore. And as the topic suggests, today I'm going to talk about modeling production facilities in Promax, and then we'll talk about how you can easily allocate your hydrocarbons to their respective source sources throughout your production facility. But today is really going to be about production uh, facility model. We'll discuss how to build it. We'll discuss what is a mixed species concept we have introduced in Promax 5. And then we'll apply this concept uh, to simulate allocation. And at the end, we'll also show you how to use our case study tool, scenario tool, to optimize your facility. So how do we start when we're building a model? Now, this <clears throat> applies to you building your own facility model. But the same applies to us building a model for you. So part of our services uh, is our unlimited support. And we are always happy to build the models for you based on some data you can provide us. So what are the data you always need? You need to know the layout of your system. So PFD or screenshots from your control rooms will tell you how are the different unit of operations connected to each other. You also need to know the inlet compositions. Uh, those will usually come from your PVT analysis. Usually it's a list of normal hydrocarbons for the lighter components, and then usually some pseudo components for the heavier fractions. You also need to know what are your inlet flows. Now, this might not be that easy to obtain. Usually you don't really know the total hydrocarbon flow, but for example, you know the gas flow rate from the inlet separator, uh, but any, any of that information is very important for, for the model building. Then of course, you need to know some process, some operating conditions, so, for example, operating temperature and pressure of the separator or uh, compressor curves um, to be able to correctly model the compressor behavior or pump behavior. And last, uh, it's always good to know what are your actual production rates. And those can be then easily compared with the model outputs or the model can be tuned to meet those uh, production rates. So those are the things you need when building a model. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into Promax and I'm going to show you a model I have already created. So you can see that I have already finished the drawing part. So my system is already drawn here. Uh, I have also already put my components, I have defined my components. And as you can see written up here, from methane up to hexane, I have just used the normal components from Promax library. For heavier fractions, I have defined them as pseudo components or what we call in Promax single oils. Um, if you wanna know how to define a single oil, if I go here to oil, I can click on edit oils, I can go to single oils collection and I can definitely define a new one, but I just want to show you um, one of the oils, single oils I have defined previously. So if I double click on it, it actually opened on my second screen. Uh, but here you can see that the only things I have defined are molecular weight and specific gravity. And all the other properties were calculated uh, for me based on certain correlations. 
if you have some other values like volume average boiling point or if you have uh let's say watson k and so on or viscosities you can change those values here if necessary this is how you define your pseudo components i have also defined i have used those components and i have defined composition of the streams so for all my inlet streams i have already defined their compositions and to start with i have already defined inlet flows and i started by defining the inlet flows on mass basis so i have assumed that i already know uh, the flow rate the total flow rate coming from my field four and I also know how much produced water I have. Uh, later on, we'll look at how to specify the inlet streams if we do not know the total hydrocarbon inlet flow. All right, so we'll, we'll definitely get, get to that. So some things already solved, as you can see here, the green part that's already solved. Uh, the red part, is still red because it's missing some specifications. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go and I'm going to show you how to specify some of the missing parts. So I talked, I talked about process conditions and how you should know or operating conditions of separator, for example. So if I hover over this field one, I can see that at arrival coming from the well, it's pretty high temperature, pretty high pressure, uh, but our inlet separator actually operates at 55 degrees Celsius and 52 bar. So that's something I need to specify here. I have multiple options how to go about specifying the, this. Uh, so for example, in this upper part, what I did is I used this dummy heat exchanger just to bring it to the conditions I need. So I'm just going to, after this heat exchanger, specify 55 degrees and 52 bar. And then I'm just going to assume that in the separator itself, I have zero pressure drop. So that's one way how to specify this. Uh, another way is using this setup so you see here i don't have any dummy heat exchanger i'm just going to directly connect energy stream to the separator and that lets me actually define the temperature and pressure the operating conditions directly at the outlet of the separator so i'm just going to put here 55 and 52. so those are just two options how to do the same thing essentially so let's solve these valves you see i have already defined those so we don't have to uh, define any conditions there and we'll get into this mixer now to solve any block you always need to know both of its uh, or not both all of its inlet streams now you see that we already know these ones but we don't know the stream 131 and that's because it's actually coming from here and if we track it back there we'll notice that to be able to know that stream we would have to know what's happening downstream here so that's why we're using this recycle block over here to break that loop and anytime you need you use a recycle block you need to provide an initial guess to start the solution. The initial gas always goes into the outlet stream of the recycle block. So I could just come here to this stream and, you know, I could guess what the temperature, pressure, flow rate and composition could be. Uh, but I'm a little bit lazy person, so I don't want to uh, come up with my guess. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to disconnect this stream for a moment. And that will allow me to solve the recycle. 
see the recycle, just copied whatever is coming in to the outlet stream. And now this stream 141 will keep this as an initial guess. So I can follow downstream and do some more specifications. So I have already predefined these blocks. So we'll just go and solve them. As you see, the stream is still red, so that indicates it's missing some specification. And that is actually that the valve is dropping the pressure down to about two bar. So I'll put two over here. And we're kind of having the same problem as before. We see we don't know these streams yet. We have a recycle block here, and I'm going to use the same technique as before. I'm just going to go here, solve the recycle block and get the initial guess over here. Now, stage three separator is operating at 1.8 bar, eight bar. So that allows me to solve the separator and I'm going towards the final condensate part. And we do have a pump here. So for the pump, I'm going to say what the outlet pressure will be. And I would actually like to ask you, what else do I have to specify for the pump? You see, it's still red. I specified my desired outlet pressure. There is one more thing which needs to be specified around here. It is indeed the efficiency. So I have to go to my pump and I go to process data and I just assume that the pump has 70% overall efficiency. And you see that makes these streams brown, which indicates that they're ready to be solved and we are moving to the heat exchanger. The cooler cools down the condensate to 41 degrees Celsius. And I specify that, but this is still red. What do you think I'm missing? What specification should I also make here? So we need to specify pressure drop. So if I go to the heat exchanger, can specify pressure drop over here. All right. And that makes this part solved. Uh, looks like I'm still missing something over here. So let's have a look at what's that. Uh, it's probably something around this compressor. You see it's still red, so I'm missing some specification. Uh, this compressor is actually compressing the gas up to eight, 0.14 bar, so I can specify that over here. And as for a pump before, we need to specify an efficiency. So if I go to process data, I can specify some efficiency. Note that you can also specify performance curves in Promax. So if you have data for your, for your compressor, for the performance curves, you can add those here, and then the behavior of the compressor is going to be controlled by, by that. And that was actually the last thing I was missing. So you can see that everything else turned kind of brown. It's ready to get solved. So I'm just going to hit execute flow sheet. Now, solved. The last thing I'm missing here is I have to reconnect my recycle streams uh, back. So remember, I have disconnected those to get an initial guess to my recycle block, but now I can connect it back. And if I just hit execute flow sheet, it's going to iterate through the recycles until it finds a solution. So this was just to really briefly show you how easy it is to make some um, basic specifications. Now, once it solves and before we look at some important 
results you can get out of this model. Let's discuss a bit what do you do when you actually don't have the total hydrocarbon inlet flow easily given to you. You see, so initially I've just specified a mass flow of the fuel four, for example. But that's not usually what you know. Oftentimes what gets measured is, for example, the gas flow rate out of the inlet separate, right? So if that's the information we have, let's use it in the model. So this first separator over here, that's um, the inlet separator for field one. Now, if we know directly the composition of the stream going into the separator, so in our case, it would be a composition of the field one together with the produced water. So you can have a look in composition here. You see we have some hydrocarbons and we do have some amount of water here already. So if we know this composition, we can directly go to this gas outlet stream and specify its measured flow rate. Okay, so whatever the meter tells you. So I'm going to say that this has this amount of normal uh, cubic meter per hour flowing out of the separator. And with that, Promax is able to back calculate and figure out how much of the inlet stream actually goes in and it's able to figure out what is the composition and flow rate of the condensate stream and the water stream as well. So if you know directly the composition of the inlet stream to the separator, just specify your gas flow rate after the separator and it will back calculate it for you. Very easy. If you have some further, let's say, mixing or change in a composition before the separator, so you don't directly know what the composition of the inlet stream is, you have to use a solver to help you figure out how much, what's the actual hydrocarbon flow rate. But it's also very easily done. So basically you just go to this F1 stream and you click here and you create simple solver. I have already created that. Uh, and later on, I'm going to show you, if you're not familiar with what solvers are, I'm going to show you where you can find some nice tutorials uh, for solvers. But let me just do show calculator. I have a solver here, which is targeting my gas flow outside, out of the separator. And I'm just going to make this solver active and give it some initial guess. All right, so I just guessed uh, what it could be. And with that, I'm going to hit execute. And you see it's iterating, okay? So solver, if you're not familiar with them, solvers are iterating and they're helping you to figure out, in this case, how much hydrocarbons need to flow in to get the measured gas flow, okay? So those are the two options to use if you have some other flow rate information after the separator. Now let's look at some of the results we can see in this model. Uh, so starting from the bottom, uh, water flow rate, so we can easily see how much water we get out of the system. Uh, very important to keep in mind here, the water stream, it's not just pure water, okay? The separator in Promax is really going to model the fact that some of the hydrocarbons and some other components are going to be dissolved 
in the water, okay? So some of your hydrocarbons are going to end up in the water stream. Then condensate export. Again, we see the flow rate, so we can here on the properties find what is a standard liquid flow rate of the stream, what is the actual liquid flow rate of the stream. We can find here things like specific gravity, API gravity, um, and some other information like viscosity, etc. One of the nine important things you might want to know about your condensate could be uh, RVP, so read vapor pressure. Again, something you can find here if you create an analysis. There is this vapor pressure analysis, and that one will calculate the read vapor pressure for you. So you can easily, easily see that. Uh, but if I look at composition, I just see a regular composition, right? I just see how much methane I have, uh, how much of the heaviest fraction I have in the stream. But I have no idea so far how much of this heaviest component actually belongs to field one or field two, okay? So at this stage, the model doesn't tell me that. What about gas? So let's have a look at our gas export stream. Again, I can see here things like um, normal vapor volumetric flow. I can see also heating values if I need to. So in analysis, uh, we have a combustion analysis, which will give you values like volumetric net, ideal gas heating value, and some other heating values you might be interested in. You can also have a look here at some hydrate conditions, for example. So if I add an analysis, which is called freeze out hydrate water dew point, and I solve it, I can directly see here that at this composition, the solids formation temperature, so the hydrate formation temperature, is 16 0.8 degrees Celsius. And I can see here what my water content is, what my water dew point temperature is, and so on. So all that can be seen in the model. But again, if I look at composition, I have no idea how much of this belongs to each of the fields. So <clears throat> this model, as we have it right now, gives you really a lot of information, flows and all the RVPs, specific gravities and so on, but it doesn't tell you yet who owns the products, okay? So that is a question of hydrocarbon allocation, which is sometimes called hydrocarbon accounting. And that specific field of interest what it does is it allocates the hydrocarbons in the products to their sources. So to the field one, field two, field three, or field four. Because essentially it's very important information because you need to know how much you, get, you will get paid, right? If you own 20% of the condensate you get paid more than a guy who owns 10% of the condensate, all right? So allocation is very important uh, when you have these facilities where different fields from different owners are being mixed. It can also be important just when you want to track certain components throughout your facility. So, what we will look at right now is what are the current methods used for allocation. And we will then discuss in more detail the mixed species method, which we have in Premax version 5. The three 
methods which were used before Premax 5 was released were a standalone method, where basically what you do, you model each well separately. So the model I just showed you, what I would do, I would just say, okay, let's just have field one running through the facility. I would set the flow rates of field two, three, and four to zero. And I would see at the end, how many cubic meters per hour of condensate do I get, right? And I would assume that belongs to field one. The problem with this method is that it does not take into account any commingling effects. Because if you think about it, once two different hydrocarbon streams are mixed and they're being sent to a separator, they're going to affect each other, right? They are going to change, how, change the phase behavior in the separator. So the standalone method doesn't really take that into account at all. Uh, the other method uh, we, we see being used is so-called by difference. Here, you do exactly the opposite thing. You run all the wells through the simulation, except one. And then you say, whatever is missing in the production line, that's what the field one was contributing with. So in this option, you consider some commingling because you're actually modeling some of the wells together, but essentially you are establishing how much field one makes without even running field one through the simulation, all right? So it's not ideal, definitely. Third method uh, is so-called cloned components. Uh, what you do there is you use full sets of components for each uh, well, okay, for each field. Uh, but that means that since you will have four sets of components, those will be created as clones or pseudo components. And it will essentially mean that now in your simulation, you will have four different methanes. Okay, four different ethanes and so on. And that's not going to play well for uh, thermodynamic calculations. So while this method considers um, commingling, it's not thermodynamically correct. The cloned method, the cloned components method, another disadvantage of this method is that you, since you have four sets of components, if you have four fields coming in, the list of your components in your simulation is just huge. So the simulation usually takes very long time to solve, especially, you know, imagine some of the fields where some of the production facilities where you have six or maybe even more different fields coming together. It's quite complicated with a lot of recycled blocks. Um, we have seen the clone components methods method to take really long time to solve. Just for one case, imagine you run case studies, Whew. then your computer is basically running um, these models all the time. So in Promax 5, we have introduced a new method and it's called mixed species or how we like to call it allocation by full account. Because what you essentially do here, you use a single composition set for all your wells. If it's exactly a single composition set, or if you have some, if you have um, more sets, it really depends on your PVD characterization. But at least uh, for the lighter components, which are using normal components from library, you only have one. So you only have one methane in your simulation. And then what you do, you perform accounting or allocation 
around each unit of operation. Okay? And don't worry, I'm going to demonstrate how, how to do it very easily. So what is actually a mixed species? <clears throat> mixed species in general, it's a collection of components which is represented by a single name. So a very simple example is air. Uh, if you think about it, air is a collection of nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, and argon at a set composition. I'm going to show you some other mixed species we already have pre-built in Promax. But the important thing to know is that whenever you use this mixed species, nothing changes behind the scenes or under the hood, as I like to say. At the composition level, the user sees air, the mixed species air. But under the hood, Promax knows that it's 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. And all the thermodynamic calculations and all of that is done using nitrogen and oxygen. Okay? So if I go back to my Promax simulation and I go to active environment and I navigate to components, I will choose here that I want to I want to only look at my mixed species. So there are some already pre-built mixed species. So those are the ones we at BRE define for you. And you can see here, for example, seawater is a mixed species. If I scroll to the right, you can see how is it uh, defined. And then I mentioned air. So air is also a mixed species, okay? Then a lot of these are mixed refrigerants. So all of these are mixed refrigerants. Again, you can see some definitions. And for anyone who models aiming units from time to time, mixed species is what is also used for proprietary solvents, proprietary amine solvents. So we do have, thanks to mixed species, we do have Chef Treat solvents by Huntsman and Eucarsol solvents by Dell. Maybe you would be surprised, but if I scroll to the right here, I don't see the description, okay? So for proprietary solvents, we of course don't show the under the hood composition because that's proprietary information to them but it allows you to model the Huntsman and Dow solvents in Promax which is very very advantageous I would say so those are the pre-built mixed species but you as a user you can also create your own mixed species and I'm going to show you how how to do that to start uh, with this what I like to do, I like to keep um, my flow sheet <clears throat> as it is right now. And next to it, I would like to have a second flow sheet where I'm going to be making all the changes into my allocation model. And it's just for a purpose of demonstration, just so I can prove to you that both of these models are, are equal. So to make a copy of this uh, flow sheet, I'm going to use a functionality uh, called export and append project. So first, uh, what I always recommend doing is making sure that you save your project from time to time. So I'm just going to save this. Once I have it saved, I'm going to go and use the export functionality. So if I click on export project, I'll be able to save this file 
as an exported project file. And you see it has a little bit different ending than normal Promax files. And I'll click Save. So now I basically exported my simulation out. And I could take that export file and append it to any other file I have, but I'm actually going to append it to the same, to the same one. So now I will click on append project and it will allow me to append this export I've just created and I'll click open. So now it took the exported file and it appended to uh, the same file. So as you will see in a second, we will have two flow sheets next to each other. All right. So if I go back, you see I have two flow sheets next to each other. I'm actually going to rename this one because this is going to be the one where I'm going to work with the mixed species. So I'm just going to name it to mixed species. I'm going to delete the components and change a name of my environment because now this is going to be using, this is going to be mixed species environment. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I'll give it the right name. And in the components, I don't want to see this list here anymore. So let's just remove all of them. So I'll use this double arrow and delete it. And let's hit OK. I'll also delete this part because we are not going to be using it anymore. All right. So now to be able to start using the mixed species, I need to create those mixed species. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my pure species file and I'm going to create my mixed species. There are multiple ways how to do it. Uh, one of them is if I open any stream and here on the left side, I just scroll down and I will see this mixed species collection. I can just right click and click add and then define my mixed species. And it's very easy because I can just type the name of the components here and it will recognize that oxygen is O2 and so on. So I could go here and define all of them here. But I don't have to do it actually, because if you think about it, field one composition has already been defined over here on my pure species flow sheet. So let's use that as an advantage. I, if I go here and I click on this, right click on this composition, I can use this create mixed species. And I'll call this field one. And then you see we have all the composition here. If you like, you can use water in your stream composition definition, but mm -hmm. I usually don't like to. And I'll click OK. And I'm going to do the same for the other fields. So very easy, go to composition, right click, create, mix species, and change it to field two. The same for field three. So you see very, very easy to do. We just go field by field and define those mixed species. OK. 
Okay, so now we have them defined. And now I'm going to move on to my mixed species flow sheet. We have them defined, but we haven't installed them in our environment yet. So if I go to active environment and I go to components, here at the bottom, you can see that user mixed species can be found here. So scrolling down, I'll be able to find the four mixed species I have just defined. And now have a look. If I choose field one, and I just use this single arrow, it just moves it to the right as a mixed species. Okay. Let me move it back. If I instead use this arrow with a bracket, it will open it up. So if I hit it, you see it will open up and actually install the components which are used to define that mixed species. Okay, so this is just to prove you that it really is just a collection of some components. Let's move it back and let's really install field one through field four. And let's install water separately. Okay. And let's hit OK. So now I have it in my environment. If I go to any inlet stream right now and I go to composition, you see that these are what I actually see as my components. And I'm going to just very quickly define them. So this is produced water stream. That's really just 100% water. And I'll do the same thing for all the inlet streams. So field one has a composition of what? Just 100% field one, right? By doing this, I'm just basically saying that under the hood, it has the composition with which I defined the mixed species. I'm going to do this rest of the definition very quickly. But you see it goes very, I mean, it goes quickly. Once you know where to click, I can define this inlet composition very, very quickly. Okay, done. If we look here, uh, again, we do have the two recycle blocks. So as before, we have two options. We either come up with our initial guesses for the outlet streams of the recycle blocks, or we use the trick I did before. So we just disconnect these for a moment. We hit execute flow sheet. That will automatically populate the initial guesses for us. And then we'll just reconnect them. Okay, so very easily reconnecting and then hitting execute flow sheet again, and it's going to iterate. Once this solves, uh, what I like to do, I like to compare my production rates between the two models. So remember, pure species flow sheet, just using pure species. So if I check my composition list, I just see my hydrocarbons. I have no idea about allocation. Mixed species flow sheet, if I open any stream, I actually see the allocation as a composition. All right, so looks like it's solved. So let's compare some numbers. Okay, so on my pure species flow sheet, I'm producing 429 tons per day of water. On my mixed species, I'm producing completely the same amount. What about condensate? So on condensate, 
I'm producing 319 cubic meters per hour on mixed species flow sheet, totally the same flow rate of condensate. Finally, let's compare gas. So here I have 710,000 on gas export. And here I have 710,000 on gas export. So I do have completely the same results. Why? Because essentially these are completely the same models. Okay. Under the hood, everything is the same, completely the same, but there is a huge advantage of the mixed species version. And that is that now if I look at composition, I actually know who owns what. I can directly look at standard liquid volumetric flows and I can see that field one owns 170 cubic meters per hour. But if you use this mixed species version, right, you might want to know also what is the real under the hood composition of that stream. Okay. So it's nice that you can see the allocation, but what if I want to know how much of methane belongs to field one? Okay. Or how much of the heaviest fraction belongs to field one? All of that can be easily found here. If you create so-called mixed species analysis. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to solve it. And that will show me on the first tab, actual composition. So that actually, that really shows you the decomposition, which is being used to calculate, to, to do all the thermodynamic calculations. Okay. All the flash, it flashes and so on. So this is actually the real composition of that stream. Okay. We also have a tab called expanded composition and that one shows you the composition, but based on uh, who it belongs to. So this is where you could find an answer to a question. Uh, how many kilomoles per hour of C6 coming, C6 is coming from field one and boom, here you have it. Then you could look at how many, how many moles is coming from field two. Okay. So all of that can be found on expanded composition. Tab. And then partition tab kind of, kind of sum, sums it up. So it also tells you how much belongs to each field, but on percentage basis. So here I can easily see that uh, if I look at the heaviest fraction, 79% of that belongs to field one. Okay. So all that information is available, available for you. If you create this mixed species analysis and I'm getting a question in the chat, dear Katrina, what should I do when I only need volume of C3 and C4 from each stream? And I believe um, now your question is answered. So you just come, you just go to the stream and create a mixed species analysis and you can get all of that here. Okay. Now let's, let me prove you one more thing. I have claimed that the accounting is done around each unit of operation. Okay, so let me show you how that actually works. So let's have a look at the balance around stage two separator. So let's have a look at our inlet stream to the separator. So if I look at composition, I can see that 48% of this inlet stream belongs to field one. 
if I create the mixed species analysis and I solve it, I can see what the actual composition is. And let's, for example, focus on C7. Okay, so C7, we have almost 200 kilomoles per hour of C7 going into the separator. If I look at partition, I can see that, you know, 45% of the C7 belongs to field one. And for example, field two, this is a nice number to remember, field two owns 4% of the C7 going in, okay? And as I said, we have around 200 kilomoles. It goes into the separator. The separation is done using the actual composition. And let's have a look at the gas stream. And let's directly do the mixed species analysis. Now, would we expect a lot of C7 in our gas stream? Not really, right? C7 will more likely end up in the condensate stream. But there is going to be still some. And as you see here, from the 200 coming in, around four kilomoles of C7 ended up in the gas stream. If you remember, field two owned 4% of the C7 going into the separator. Now I have a quiz question for you. How many percent of C7 will be owned by field two in the gas stream? So we have much less C7 here. Okay, but how many percent of this four kilomoles is owned by field two? So let's, let's check. I'm not going to hold you anymore. Let's go into partition and let's see. It's completely the same percentage. And that's what it's all about, okay? This is what a real accounting is. If you own a certain percentage of C7 going in, you will own the same percentage going out. Now, of course, it's going to be much less kilomoles per hour because going in, we had 200 kilomoles. Going out in this gas stream, we have only four kilomoles. But the percentage of your ownership of that particular component, C7, stays the same, okay? So this is the whole concept of doing accounting around each unit operation. So very simplistic. You come in, you do the separation using the actual composition, and then you apply this partition on each component around each unit operation. Okay, so I hope this is clear to, to everyone and that you, you have it in your system, uh, but very easy and it really gives you a lot of answers because any, t any stream I'll check in the simulation, I can directly see how much of this, how much of the stream do I own. Uh, when I talked about the other methods, I mentioned that the cloned component method, uh, one of its disadvantages is that it takes time to solve because we have these huge lists of components. With mixed species method, this is not a case, right? We, under the hood, we still have the one set of components. So the simulation is very fast. And let me show you that it's just as fast as a general 
production facility model which does not care about allocation. So let's make a few simple changes. I'm just going to change the field one flow rate to um, 100,000 kilograms per hour. And I'm also going to change some process conditions. So let's change this operating pressure to two bar. Okay, so I made the changes on the general production facility model. And I'm going to execute flow sheet. You see it's solving here. It's going to iterate on the recycle blocks. And once it's happy with the solution, it will tell me how many seconds it, it took to solve. Now, how many it seconds it does, you know, it depends on the changes you made. It depends on your computer for sure as well. I believe me having a lot of things open doesn't really help, uh, but it's going to get there. It's going to get to a solution. And what I see here is that it took uh, around 34 seconds. So I'm going to note this down. 34 seconds. Now let's do the same changes on my species. So I'll do 100,000 flow rate and I'll do two bar over here. And I'll click execute flow sheet. And again, it's going to iterate and we'll see if the mixed species model actually takes more time or if it's comparable. Now, how fast it, uh, it goes, it also depends on tolerances of the recycle box, just so you know. And it finished and it actually took around 25 seconds. So you see that it, in our case, uh, now it actually took a little bit less than my general pure species model. But the important thing is it doesn't take more. It doesn't take hours to solve because there is not this huge list of components. Okay, so last thing I would like to show you today is how you can use our case study tool to perform some optimization of your production model and also how you can track the changes in the ownership. So how you can track the changes in the allocation. So if you have never used our scenario tool, uh, we do that through Excel interface. So I'm going to add Excel workbook to the simulation and open it actually here. And I have another Excel where I already prepared how I want the table to look like. So let me just copy it over. Okay. So the study I want to do is I want to have a look at how does the operating pressure of the stage three compressor and how does the temperature of the gas knockout, so that would be this knockout drum, so this temperature, how do these two affect my allocation? Okay, so I have prepared a table here, and then next thing, I'm going to go to Promax and I'm going to create scenario tool. I will we'll go through this rather quickly, uh, and again, I'm going to show you a video, a tutorial video, where you can um, follow the steps and, and create your own scenario tools. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to define my input variables. So those are the variables I want to take from my Excel file and change them into, change them in my Promax file. So first is the stage three pressure. So that's actually this stream. And here I'll just navigate through this window and find a pressure. 
And here I'm just going to select the correct um, cells in my Excel file, and I'm going to check the units. Next thing, uh, defining the second input variable. So gas, milk, uh, temperature. Again, select Promax object. Now, as I said, it's actually this temperature. So I'll just click on the stream. It will find it automatically. And I'll just select temperature. And again, I could select these cells. I could just hover over them again or I can use the cell selection adjustment. So let me just do that. I'm going to check the units. Perfect. And hit OK. So these two are going to be taken from Excel and changed in the Promax file as different cases. And I'm going to track the allocation. So first thing is my condensate export composition. So that will be my first output variable. I'll hit select Premax object. I want to go to condensate export. Now I'm not interested in property. I'm interested in composition. And I'm actually interested in my liquid volumetric flows. So that would be this one. Since this is an array of components, I can define that array together. I don't have to define each component separately. So that's what I will do. I'll just select the standard liquid volumetric flow. And I'm going to here hover over all these five components and all these runs together. And because I want the numbers to be outputted horizontally, you see I have the components written horizontally, I'm going to select the scan cell regions horizontally. And I'll click OK. Let's do the same for gas. So it will be just a different stream. And I don't want standard liquid volumetric flow. I want normal vapor volumetric flow. I'll hover over these and I select scan cell regions horizontally and I'll hit OK. And with that, I prepared a very simple scenario tool. And I can see here that I want to run it from 1 to 11. And I'll just hit run. And what it will essentially do, it will start with run one and it will indicate me with colors that you see it's taking these numbers, inputting them into the simulation and it's running this run one and it's going to be give me outputs over here. While this is running, let me show you the tutorial videos I was talking about. So if you go to our website, which is just bre.com and you go to support and tutorials, you can find a lot of tutorial videos here. Uh, they are <clears throat> put into different groups. So for example, if you're interested in anything related to upstream uh, facilities, you can find some interesting videos here. Uh, and Etc. But if you're interested in just in like general Promax functionalities, this general folder and basics will show you, for example, a video of the scenario tool I was talking about. So scenario tool basics. This will really guide you through exactly how and where to click. And then we also have uh, some videos for uh, for solvers. So all of those can be found here. And you see my scenario tool is running without me interacting with it. So the scenario tool is a really great tool if you need to run 
case studies. If you have a lot of cases, different conditions, different flow rates, even different inlet compositions, strongly recommend you to set up a scenario tool. It is not limited on how many inputs or outputs you can have. I have created at successfully run scenario tools with 100 input variables and 100 output variables, and it worked. So really anything um, you can even you can imagine can be done using the scenario tool. And you get the answers in Excel. Um, everyone knows how to do plots in Excel, how to do some extra calculations. So all of that can be performed here. So for example, one calculation I would like to do here is figure out what is the difference between a maximum value of a flow rate I get and a minimum? Just to get an idea on the range and just to see if the range is very different for the different, different fields. Because that can, um, that can indicate how, you know, how the different process conditions affect different owners. And this is very important to keep track of because, you know, you might be owner of field one, but the facility is being operated by the owner of field two. So obviously he's going to try to set up the process conditions such that he earns most, right? But that might be actually hurting you a bit. So it's always good to perform the sensitivity analysis to make sure that you're getting paid the amount you deserve. So this is uh, running, but you can see some interesting results here. While the different process conditions don't affect much how much uh, field one is making in the condensate, it has much more uh, significant effect on the field three. And the same goes for, for the gas export. So with that, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Um, thank you everyone for joining us for this session and have a, have a great day.